Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I have four literally trash to treasures for you. So don't throw out your scrap woods. Let's get started. I'm just using my angle grinder with a flap disc on it to take off the rounded edges. Give it a little hand scraped look. I start out by putting a layer of white paint. Once that's dry, you can. the next step is going to be putting some Mod Podge, a nice thin coat, and then putting your picture face down. Let that dry overnight on both. And then this is where the magic happens. Take a wet rag or a wet paper towel, pretty saturated wet, but not really dripping, and just start rubbing. And you'll start to see that picture come through. Um, I find that the best tool for me was to use my fingers and just start rolling that paper off the top. And sort of magically, the picture that has been glued down with the Mod Podge sort of stays sealed. So you're just taking off the top layer of paper. So I'm just going to be taking a light sanding just to sort of make the edges look a little bit more rustic, a little more torn, and a little more worn actually. So this is up to your discretion, whichever way you want to do it. And finally putting some polyacrylic on it. This is like the best part ever because when you start to add that, the photo comes to life. Watch how the color changes on the picture as soon as you start adding the acrylic.
Okay, so we're on to our third project. I just took that piece of two by six and I'm doing the same thing that I did before using my angle grinder to make the edges very rounded and sort of chunky looking and very tumbled looking. And I like taking off the edges and giving that hand scraped look. So I'm putting a lot of dings and scratches into it with the angle grinder. So this is the fun part now. I'm using my little torch. Um, I use this usually for my fire pit outside and it's, the method is called a Shoshuji Ban, but this is the modified version of that. I'm basically taking um, my torch and torching the top of the wood. The true Shoshuji Ban is actually charring the wood on the top and then um, scraping it but I'm only giving this a little bit of color with my fire because I can't stain this because it's gonna be a food safe. So if you haven't figured out what this is going to be yet, you'll see probably in the next clip. Um, so basically I'm just gonna be putting this torch up to it and giving it a little bit of color, burning it, but not burning it all the way through. This is a nice way of adding color without adding any chemicals to your wood, especially if I want to use this for a, um, some kind of um, food safe um, display. Right after I'm done with um, burning it, I'm going to give it a light sand just to sand off the charred top. And I'm going to put some painter's tape on this because I want to create small little boxes of chalkboard because I want to write on it each area that I plan to serve on it. So yes, this is going to be a little serving tray slash charcuterie board. So I'm just using your basic chalkboard paint in the front. My paint is dry. I'm going to remove all the tape. and not wasting any more wood, I'm taking the remaining of those dowels that I used on a previous project and using for the bottom to make feet so this be raised off a counter. And I'm simply gluing them with some wood glue. And I'm simply going to be putting some butcher block oil on it. You can pick this up at any um, home improvement store and it's fairly cheap, but I'm going to be using just a paper towel to put this on, rubbing it in. And um, again, that also brings out all of that wood grain, which is really pretty. I'm going to be adding some simple handles. I have these on hand. You don't have to add handles, but I thought it gave it a little more character. Just adding some simple handles to the sides, pre-drilling my holes, and putting them on with the screws that were provided.
on to our third project. I'm just taking a basic dowel. Some people find these dowels at the Dollar Tree with the plunger dowels, they've been using those. I have them as a paint stick, but I also had this leftover spindle from a chair and I'm just going to trim this down. So I'm gonna be drilling a hole in the top of the spindle and I'm gonna be using a Forstner bit. So I'm just gonna be clamping this to the side of my table and creating a hole for the dowel to go through. I did lose some footage on this, so I believe that you're not gonna see me putting the dowel through the spindle, but I do attach it to that piece of wood. So again, sorry that I lost that footage, but I attached the spindle to the piece of wood with a screw on the bottom and some wood glue. And then put the dowel through the top hole that we made. I attached some beads to the end and with some wood glue. And finally painting it. This is a pretty useful Thing. I like to make useful things um, with wood that I have left over, especially when they don't cost me anything to make. So this is a pretty cool project. You'll see in the end how I stage this and how I use it. Just a quick coat of white paint. Okay, for our fourth project, this is one of my favorite projects that I like to do. Um, they're so expensive in the stores and it's just not necessary. I took the same, um, I believe these are two by tens or two by twelves, I'm not sure. And um, I made a template and I'm creating a triangle on the bottom that I can cut out. And I made a template, so of course, making this a little easier for me, I don't have to keep measuring. So I made a quick template of the size of the piece of wood and I'm just making a triangle so that I can cut it out with my jigsaw. So I had to bring it down to the floor because it's a little large for on top of the table. So I, if you haven't noticed, I'm making a bench and I'm just gonna make sure that these sides are square and making sure I have a two inch overhang on each side, which is what I prefer. And I'm using two and a half inch screws, making sure everything is square and I'm going in from the top. You could also use pocket hole screws if you like. Um, I didn't have any pocket hole screws, so I just went in from the top. I don't mind seeing the screws from the top. And then I took a one by four and put that across the top just to give it a little, like basically like a little skirt and put a quick angle on it, a 30 degree angle on the sides. And now I'm giving it a quick sand. And the stain that I used for this, I actually mixed two stains. I didn't want it too, too dark. 
um, I mixed a pine color with just a little bit of dark walnut. It turned out to be a really nice color. So that's what you'll see me doing here is mixing up the paints a little bit together. And that's going to do it for these four projects, and this is how they turned out. I hope you guys like these. You can use this for headphones or any kind of things that you have hanging. Trust to clean up your little area with, you could put your watch or your scrunchies on it. It's just a cute little holder. You could even make it a little bit taller and make it for jewelry. I also made one in a natural color and I only made it as a stain. This is for our headphones. This was so fun to make. I had been wanting to make one for a really long time. This charcuterie board, little cheese board is so cute. You can also make this a little larger and you can make it with, um, you know, tons of other stuff you can put on it like you know chips and crackers and uh, meats and all kinds of things but this was a cute little addition and here's how my bench turned out so cute I'm not sure where I'm going to put this yet but I love the way this turned out and I love the color it's not too too dark and it looks more rustic and antique looking it could really go anywhere. Here's how my pictures turned out. I love the way these turned out. Literally cheap, free wall art. I love how they turned out. They're all rustic. I hope that you guys loved these projects. I love spending no money and using what you have. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It gets me noticed on YouTube.